Uh, hi everybody, uh, this is Steve. I'm a former maths teacher, owner of a board game cafe, and we're going to do some maths. This is the Intermediate Maths Challenge. We did the junior one earlier in the week, and this is from 2019. We will also be intending to do the senior one uh, within the next week or so. Um, the way it's going to work, I'm going to have a go through this. Uh, the time is 60 minutes. I might take a bit more than 60 minutes because I'm also going to explain it. If you're watching this because you like maths, in the link to uh, the YouTube video, if you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link to the paper. Uh, if not, you can Google Intermediate Maths Challenge or Mathematical Challenge, uh, and you're going to do the Intermediate one, the 2019 edition. And at the end of this video, we are also going to mark it. So there we go. Um, if you are a year 9 to 11 pupil and you're using this as like a help for you to have a go at one yourself, uh, you're about to sit one, um, don't be expected, to, unless you're really brilliant and your aiming is to complete this and go on to the next stage, uh, don't expect to finish it. There'll be some questions you struggle to do. A lot of the questions have elegant solutions and if you don't spot the elegant way, the long way takes time. So there are kind of some brute force methods to do some questions. So if you can't always spot the elegant uh, way because you're not a maths teacher or you've not got the experience, don't worry. Just skip the question, come back to it if you've got time. Um, and the maths is nice, it's not the sort of maths you get taught in school necessarily, you'll need all the little toolbox tricks you're taught in school to do these, but obviously the types of questions you get are a lot more uh, algebraic abstract rather than, you know, Bob goes into a shop and buys some things. Um, and the way it's scored is that each question is worth five or six marks, you'll notice in number six that it says scoring rules. The first 15 questions are worth five marks, and for those questions, if you're going to do this in real life, there's no penalty for getting those wrong. So at the end of the paper, if you haven't been able to do a certain question, you go back and get it. Questions 16 to 25 are all with six marks each, which I believe the total mark you can get is 125 if you get everything right. Um, but if you're guessing those last questions, you get penalised if you get them wrong. So uh, if you get question 16 to 20 wrong, you lose a mark. And if you get question 21 to 25 wrong, you lose two marks. I am streaming this live on Twitch. This is a recording from Twitch, so if you are watching along Twitch live now, feel free to um, chat to me, join in with me, ask me why I did something, or uh, let me know if I've gone wrong, because obviously I've got a lot of other things going on rather than just doing some maths. Um, but if you are watching on YouTube, when I stop and talk to someone as if someone's there, it's because I'm interacting with the people on Twitch in my chat. And you can't quite see the chat, but I'll read out what they've said and then I'll try and answer their question. Uh, but otherwise, off we go. You don't need anything more than a pencil and a straight line, a ruler. You don't, you can't measure things, but you're allowed to draw straight lines. So if you've got a pencil and something to draw straight lines, that's all you're allowed and that's all you need. Um, and let's crack on. So all the questions are multiple choice, and the way I approach these is I work out what I think the answer is and then look to see if it's there. If I'm looking to see which of these answers is most sensible, there, therein lies uh, a way to go wrong. Uh, so what is the value of 2019 tenths? Well, tenths means uh, divide by 10, so we're going to do 2019 divided by 10. That's 2019 tenths, which is 201.9, so we think it's there. Each of these five shapes below is made from five unit cubes. So unit just means a one by one by one cube, so that's one by one by one, um, which has the smallest surface area. Um, so I've seen this, this type of question quite a lot, so I know what the trick is, and I think I've already spotted which I think the answer is. Um, but it, the long way would be to work out the count out all the spaces on the surface area. So you'd count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, because each of these has an area of 1 by 1. And then you'd also count the reverse of so 12, 13. And that can be quite hard to visualise for some people. So let's see if we can logically talk about what's the case. If all five cubes were loose, so if these were loose, all of the cubes, they'd all have the same surface area because each one would have a surface area of six centimeters squared and then you'd add them all together. So the way to reduce the surface area is to put them face to face. If you can imagine every time you have a cube that's facing another cube, you're losing two centimeters squared of surface area. So you can think about this, this connection here. Okay, these two cubes are touching on that point there. That means you're going to lose one face off each cube. So all we're looking for, I believe, is the one that's touching, it's got the most joints effectively. So this has one, two, three, four joints. 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 So I was looking straight away for the last one. This has got one, two, three, four, five joints, I believe. E will be two centimeters squared less than the rest of them. There are 12 
uh, to 120,000 red squirrels living in Scotland. This represents 75% of their total UK population. Obviously, Scotland is part of the UK. How many more red squirrels, I said currently, how many more red squirrels live in Scotland than live in the remainder of the UK? So if there's 120,000, that is three quarters, which means one quarter is 40,000, and in total is 160,000. However, the question isn't what's the total, it's how many more live in Scotland than the remainder. So how much bigger is three quarters to a quarter? It's going to be 80,000. A 24-hour digital clock shows the time in hours and minutes. How many times in one day will it display all four digits, 2019, in some order? All right, so we've got... So at 1 o'clock, you can have 29, but not 92. Am I just going to list these? At 2 o'clock, 02, you can have... 19 but not 91 because obviously you can't go beyond 60 here. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock you can have 12 and 21. 10, 10 o'clock you can have uh, 29 but not 92. 11, 12, 13, 14, so 19 you can have uh, 2 and 20. In fact, when you have a 9 in the first bit, you can have both of the digits. Uh, 20 o'clock is the one they've given you. You can have 19, but not 91. And 21, you can have 9, but not 90. So I th can you get any higher than that? 22, 23, 24, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think it's 9. Oh, I'm missing it. What am I missing? All four digits in some order. I'm missing something, am I? Oh, 12. I'm missing 12. So 10, 29, 11, but I can have 12, can't I? So it's a good thing that's why I work out the answer and see if it's there. So I can have 1209, which gives me 10 options. Yeah. All right, thanks, AJ. AJ said I missed 12. The good thing is, in that particular case, I got an answer that wasn't there, so I know I've made a mistake. So don't panic. I mean, once, I'm, once I get the answer 9, it feels like if I've made a mistake, it's because I've missed one out and done too many. So it's going to be 10 or 12 at that point. So if you miss one out and can't see it, think about the question. In that case, if I thought it was 9, and couldn't find my mistake, I would have guessed 10 or 12, because if I'm going to miss, I'm not going to miss many, and it's going to be a larger answer than I actually got. Okay, so this is a bit of bod mass. So in this particular case, we do the multiplying before the adding. Oh, hang on, what do I have to do? The answer to the three calculations below is written in descending order. So the descending means uh, highest to lowest. If you were descend, to descend to the stairs, you would go down. Uh, so we're going to multiply and then add, and we're going to multiply and divide, and then we're going to multiply and multiply. So this is going to be 0 0.03, add 0 0.4, so that's going to be 0 0.43. This is going to be 0 0.03, divide 0 0.4. Um, Uh, I'm going to have to write that out. So that's three hundredths uh, times ten fourths. It's going to be thirty four hundredths or three fortieths. Uh, I have to try and work out whether that's bigger than what I get, and that's not point naught three times not point four. That's going to be not point naught one two. I oh, know it's not going to be, it's going to be 0 0.012. So I need to work out what a 40th is. What's a 40th of 100? It's 0 0.025. So that's larger than that. So it's going to be in the order that I think it's just X, Y, Z. It's probably a more elegant way to do that one. 
The diagram shows part of a tessellation. Tessellation is the same shape put in a grid fitted so there's no gaps uh, of the plane by a quadrilateral. Keelan wants to colour each quadrilateral in the pattern so that no two quadrilaterals that meet, even at a point, I'm going to highlight that because I'm going to come back to that, have the same colour. What's the smallest number of colours he needs? Now, there's an interesting theorem called the four colour theorem that if you're ever going to colour the countries on a world map or something, you need at most four colours so that no two countries touching have the same colour. So you can always do it in four. So my guess is going to be four, but there's this point. The four colour theorem doesn't have this point, so I need to double check that. So even at a point. So if I colour, we've got, uh, we've got effectively rows of the like, arrows. So there's an arrows pointing this way, arrows pointing this way, arrows pointing this way. So if in each row I alternate it, so if I go red, red, that means nothing in the row above or below can have red, and the other alternate ones in the row can't have red. But in the row beneath, I can't do that one red because it meets at this point. So we maybe it is higher than we think. Can I do this one red and this one and this one? That one doesn't meet at a point. So I think if I do alternate each row red and blue, but when you when they're above each other, you alternate them. So it goes red, blue, red, blue. And then all you do with the other ones is you do the same. So we're going to have green, green and green. Sorry, green. And then the green and green. And you can see this green one doesn't touch this green one, doesn't touch this green one, doesn't touch this green one. And then the last one is yellow. So I'm just going to dot them with yellow. Now in the real thing, you're not allowed to write in the papers, mainly because your teachers want them back to give to the next year for practice. So I think it's four. But yeah, there's something called the four colour theorem. It's interesting. It took a long time to prove. Um, and you can get any world map, math type indeed. How many positive cubes, that means cube numbers, less than 5,000 end in the digit 5? So if you multiply something by itself to end in a 5, you have to end in a 5. So 5 times 5 is 25, 15 times 15 is 225, and the same with cubes. So to get something ending in a 5, the initial number has to end in a 5. So 5 cubed is 125. 15 cubed is 31,075, I think. Um, I'll double check that. And 25 cubed, I don't know off the top of my head, but 20 cubed is 8,000. So 20 cubed is too high. So 25 cubed will be too high. So I think it's 2. I'm just going to double check my 15 times table. So that's 225. And then times that by 15 gets me 5... Uh, 5, 2 is 10, 12, okay, 11, 25, 2, 2, 5, oh, 5, 7, 3. So that was close. 3,375. But I believe it's 2. I believe it's 5 cubed and 15 cubed. But it's good to check. So this is the sort of thing that you think it's 2 and you can come back to and check again. Three consecutive, that means in a row, positive integers, less than 20, are in ascending order, prime, even, and triangular. Uh, what is the product of these three integers? Because uh, there will only be one solution, the way they've worded the question, and I'm going to start with triangular numbers and work backwards. So triangular numbers are anything that can make a triangle, so I'm thinking 1, 3, 6, 10, 15 and so on. So 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21 is the next number. That's bigger than 20. So we're looking for one of these that has to be our largest of the three numbers. Uh, Steve's guessed A. <laughs> so A could be right. It could be 1, 2, and 3. I know because 1's not prime. Um, so that's odd and that's odd. So it's either going to be 1, 2, and 3 or 13, 14, and 15. Uh, so that's triangular. That's even, that's prime, but that isn't. So it's going to be these three here. And then if we multiply them together, 13 times 14 times 15. Well, 13 times 15 is, 13 times 15 is 195. And times that by 14. Uh, so four, five, so it's going to be this one because it ends in a zero. 
but I'll just prove it to you. Four fives are twenty, carry two, four and nines thirty-six, four ones are four, and then one nine five zero. So it's gonna be five thousand, so it's six thousand. What am I doing wrong? Oh, one times one is one. Thousand and eight. It's gonna be two it's gonna be I'm doing something wrong here. What am I doing wrong? Well, I know it's going to end in a zero, and it's going to be a big number. So it's 13 times. I think it's that. I can't work it. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to be pretty sure it's that. I'm not going to actually work it out. I'm doing something wrong with my times in there. But um, uh, bleh, this looks awful, isn't it? So we've got minus four times negative three divide negative two. So this is just bar math. So we're going to work out the brackets first. So this bracket is got two bits to do a subtract and a times, you do the times first. So 6 times negative 5 is negative 30, and then you're subtracting negative 30, so it's going to be 7 plus 30, because when you subtract a negative you get positive. So this is going to be 37, take 4 times this divided by this. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, divided by negative 2 is going to be positive, 20, uh, positive 6 and you're going to have 37 take away positive 6 it's going to be 31 um, A recent report about the, this is a long question a recent report about the amount of plastic created in the last 65 years stated that the 8.3 billion tons produced is as heavy as 25,000 Empire State Buildings in New York or a billion elephants. On that basis, how many elephants have the same total weight as the Empire State Building? Oh, so we know that 25,000 Empire State Buildings is the same as one billion elephants, and we just have to work out what the what what one elephant is. So this is one uh, elephant. Okay, so I'm just going to divide them. So we can cancel out three zeros, and we're going to divide one million by twenty-five. Is going to be uh, 40,000. How many 25s in 100 is 4? And then you've got four zeros. So I think it's 40,000. The nice bit about that question is that that number isn't needed. So you don't have to deal with that. Which of the following is equal to 3 to the power 9 over 9 to the power 3? So we've got 3 to the power 9 over 9 to the power 3. We know that's the same as 3 to the power 9 divided by 3 squared to the power 3. Which is 3 to the power 9. A power to a power, you multiply them, is 3 to the power 6. And then when you divide, when you're dividing powers, as long as the base is the same, so as long as they both have the same bottom number or base, you just subtract the top number, so it's going to be 3 cubed, which is 27. 8.3 8 billion would be horrible to deal with. So when I first read this question, I'm only on the first line, I have to think, I think it's going to be an estimation question, because 8.3 billion is just not a nice number. 8, 83 is prime itself, and yeah, you just, you've just got some awful numbers there, but it was nice that you didn't have to deal with that. It shouldn't be, this shouldn't be a test of your numeracy. The game of Rorim 2 is played on a 4x4 board, starting with a counter in one corner as shown. Each turn the player moves the counter to a cell that is the reflection of its current cell on one of the six dashed lines. How many cells could the counter occupy at precisely, at precisely three turns? Well, you can get to here in three, you can go one, two, three. Oh dear. You can, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, 
two, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two. So you can get to these and these. Uh, you can get to that one. One, two, three. One, two, three. And it looks like symmetry means we can't get to these. So I, my guess is you can't get back to where you started because you need an even number of moves. It looks like you need an even number of moves to hit these spots and an odd number of moves to the last one. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Yeah, so I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, so I'm missing one. Oh, one, two, three. You can, get, you can get back to where you started. You can go one, two, three. Yeah. Oh, hang on. One. No. No, you can you get back to where you started. That might be an error. What am I doing wrong? So let's just double check this. I'm missing something here. You've no idea what's going on. So what we're trying to do is reflect this circle in one of the dashed lines. So a move is just reflecting this in one of the dashed lines and getting there. So I can get to there in one move. And then from there, I can reflect in this line to get to there in two moves. And from there, I can get to this one by reflecting that line for three moves. And I'm just counting to the different spaces I can get to at the end. So I'm missing something. Let's have a look. I'm reflecting on half lines. Am I allowed to reflect in half lines, aren't I? I can get to here in one move. And from here, I can get to these spots, this one, this one, and this one. Can you tell me which space is impossible? If this is, if this is space 1 to 16, which space am I doing wrong? Oh, I can't get to that one. I can't get to that top one there. Yeah. I can't get to that one. Yeah, because I can't get back to where I started. I probably can't get to that. So I think it's eight. So. One, two, so I can get to there. One, two, three, I can get to there. So I can get to these two by symmetry. If I can get to this one, I can get to this one. So it's one, two, three. Yeah, so I can get to these two and then I can go one, two, three. So I can definitely get to all the dots I've done. Yeah, top right. So I think I think I, I got my error. My error was that one. And then because nine isn't here, but eight is. So I'm definitely going to go with eight. And looking at the grid, that looks nice. It looks like you'll need an even number to get to all the blank ones and an odd number to get to the old ones I've got to. That would be my guess. Megan writes down a list of five numbers. The mean of her first three numbers is uh, negative three. So three numbers has a mean of negative three. Four numbers has a mean of four. And five numbers has a mean of negative five. So if I have three numbers that have a mean of negative three, their sum must be negative nine. And what am I trying to work out? What is the difference between a fourth number and a fifth number? Okay. So uh, if the mean is four of four numbers, the sum is 16. And if the mean is negative five of five numbers, the sum is negative 25. That means if after three numbers I have a total of negative nine, I must have to add on 25 to get to 16. And then if I've got uh, 16, I must have to subtract... 41 to get to negative 25. 
And what is the difference between a fourth number and a fifth number? So what's the difference between 25 and 41? It's going to be 66. How far apart are they? 66. Oh, I love these. This is a, imagine this is a true-false thing, isn't it? There are four people, some of whom, all are ah, some of whom, so not everyone, we don't know how many, always tell the truth, the others always lie. All right, all right, this, this might be hard to talk through, but let's give it a go. The first person said an odd number has always told the truth. The second person said an even number has always told the truth. The third person says a prime number of us always tell the truth, and the fourth person says a square number of us always tell the truth. So how many of these four people were telling the truth? So the way I'm going to work, I'm just going to work that. I'm going to say that the first one is true. And I'm going to work out if the first one can be true, what has to be true about the rest of them. Okay, so the fourth person says a square number of us always tells the truth. So it's either one or all four. Oh no, that's only if they're true. Okay, an odd number of us always tell the truth. Which means this is a lie because they are contradicting. So if this is true, this is a lie. That's quite an easy start. If that's true, that's a lie. And then we're going to see what the other two have to be. A prime number of us always tells the truth. Well, one is not a prime number, so you definitely need another truth. But for the odd to be the case, you need these both to be true. So if the first one is true, for this for the for, for this to be true, they both have to be true. And that doesn't work. A prime number of us always tells the truth. So in that particular case, because uh, three would be prime, but four would but three would not be square. So that would be a lie. And a square number of us always tell the truth. If that was true, 2 isn't a square number, and if that was false, then there is a square number, in which case that's true. So you get a paradox here. In this particular case, 1 is uh, square and odd, which means that has to be true and that has to be true. But if that's true, the total trues is wrong. So I think... The first one cannot be true. So let's go back. So we're going to go back and try this again. So what I would now do is assuming this person is lying. If that's lying, then this must be true because they're opposites. What's the, the answer? The answer with the dots is eight, Steve. So if you just go back to the dot one. The answer to the dot one's eight. Oh yeah, the first and second contradict each other which means if one's true, the other's false. But we think that the first one can't be true because there's no way to make it work. So I think the first one is false, which means the next one's true, which means there's an even number that always tells the truth, which means one of these has to be true and one has to be false. If that's true, this, oops, the, the, then two isn't a square number. So I think it's the other way around. I think it is, this is true, and then that has to be false. So let's double check. An odd number of always tells the truth. That's a lie because it's even. An even number of always tells the truth. That's true because it's even. A prime number of always tells the truth. That's true because two is prime. And a square number of always tells the truth. That's false because it's two. Not and two isn't square. So I think it's two. Yeah. So I like. So when you get confronted with these, where you're trying to work out who's telling the truth and who's not, I would just pick someone to tell the truth and see if you can make that work. If you can't, if, if you follow it through logically, you can't, go back to that same person, pick them to tell a lie and follow it through logically. One of them will work, um, but in certain situations, there's a better personal pair to start with. In this particular one, it's definitely easy to start with the first two, because if you pick one of them, you also fix the other one. So if that's a lie, that's true, or vice versa. And then you just have to work out the other two. The diagram shows six congruent. Congruent means uh, identical in uh, length and angle. Eight glottal triangles of a side length two. So all the edges of all, this of all these triangles are two. Place together to form a parallelogram. What is the length of PR? So we're trying to find that length there. Oof. <laughs> Right. Hmm. 
Can't see an elegant way to do this. Um, I don't know, Steve. I'm checking them at the end. I can't see an elegant way to do this, but I'm going to work out this length and this length. So this length is going to be, because of the congruency and the equilateral, is going to be 1. So the bottom length is going to be 7. And the height of one of these equilateral triangles, because they're 2 nicely, the height can be worked out using Pythagoras. It's going to be 2 squared is, call it x, x squared plus 1 squared. 4 is x squared plus 1. 3 is x squared so x is the positive square root of 3. So the height here is the square root of 3. And so to work out the length of P to R, it's again Pythagoras because we've formed a right angle here. So it's again Pythagoras. So we know that the length, let's, let's call it PR, is the same as 7 squared plus root 3 squared. It's going to be 49 plus 3. So PR is a square root of 52, and then if you know anything about thirds, you can take a factor of 4 out here. So PR is 4, root 4, root 13, because 4 13s are 52. So PR is 2, root 13, and is that one of our options? Yeah, there we go. Um, so we're at the point now where we've done all the ones that we can guess. If you get to this point in the real exam, at the very end, if you haven't been able to do these, go back and make sure. These are the ones that you can't get wrong. Uh, apologies, you don't get lose marks for getting wrong. So go back and check these. These are the ones that, <clears throat> if you've had a go at a few of these before, you might get to the point where I think the first 15 are the ones you should make a good go at. And after that, you should probably, uh, if you're the sort of person who's going to run out of time on these, you should probably selectively pick some of the ones after that where you know what the method's going to be after you've read the question. Um, how, long, how long are we doing for time? We've had about half our time. We've got 10 questions left. Okay. Two numbers, x and y, have a product which is equal to their sum. So it's the sum is x plus y, and the product is x times y. Which of these expressions... Yeah, knowing So there was a really nice bit there, knowing that the height here was root 3. There might be another way to do this question, but knowing that the height is root 3 is quite nice, because if you're going to form a Pythagoras with it, when you're in Pythagoras, it's just going to come out to a 3. So when I looked at this question, I wasn't sure that there was going to be a third in the thing, but if you look at, they give you a bit of hints, you can see there that there's two of the answers with the root 3 in. So if you're really stuck for a clue, look at what the answers are giving you. If the answers are giving you something in terms of pi, and you're like, Where's pi come from? Try and look for some circles. Try and look for some things where pi will come from. Um, uh, or radians if you're doing the senior one. Okay, which of these expressions gives x in terms of y? That means we need to rearrange this. So that phrase there means we re need to rearrange this so it says x equals. So I'm going to put the x's on both sides and then going to be x lots of y minus 1, running out space, so we can have x equals y divided by y minus 1, which is this first one here. Um, so which of these expressions gives x, someone's asking in the chat, why is there no x in the answers? Which of these expressions give x in terms of y? You need to, it's basically a way of saying rearrange the information you've got so you have a formula to work out x. So in this particular case, there's our formula to work out x. If we know what y is, we can plug y in and get x. Because we only have a single x, we don't need to know what x is as long as we know what y is. And that's what that phrase means. We give x in terms of y means write a formula to work out x where you've only got y's. Which of these is equal to 0.8 recurring plus 0.07 recurring? So just for those of you not sure, 0.8 recurring is 0.8888888 and 0.07 recurring oh, 77777777. So you could add these together and you'd get like an infinite carry. I'm going to do this in a slightly different way actually, I think. I know that 0.8 recurring is uh, 8 ninths, and I think 0.07 recurring is 7 ninetieths, and I'm just going to add these together. So you get 8 ninths add 7 ninetieths 
is the same as 80 ninetieths, 87 ninetieths. Which is, I believe it's this one here, is it? No, it's got to be higher than that. Oh dear, and then I'm just going to divide it. How many 90s in 87? There might have been an easy way to do this. I could have just tried and added them together. You just did long addition, yeah. I thought this would, I honestly thought this would be a, an easier way, but then I need to know what that is as a recurring decimal. How many 90s in 87? None. How many 90s in 870? Well, there is 7. No, hang on. How many 90s in 870? There's 9. Carry 60. How many 90s in 600? There is 6. Carry 60. 6. Carry 60. So on. So it's 0.96 recurring. Uh, close, Steve. It's not A, it's D. Two numbers X and Y are such that X add Y is two thirds and X over Y is also two thirds. What is the value of X subtract Y? Well, we've got a simultaneous uh, sort of. We're going to do solve this by substitution. So we've got X plus Y is two thirds. I'm just going to solve this simultaneously, and then X over Y is two thirds. So that X is two thirds of Y. So we've got two-thirds of y plus y is two-thirds. So it's going to be five-thirds of y is two-thirds, or y equals six-fifteenths. That can't be right. Can't be right. I've done a little slip at the end there. Oops. Oh, it can be. Yeah, it can be right. So six, six fifteenths. Is that right? Which is two thirds. Five thirds of two thirds. Is that two thirds? This is what the answer. Oh, so I did the way the answer book does it. Yeah, that was just my first reaction. So I think I think if these weren't nice, because I I knew those without working them out, I just knew what they would were as fractions, and that's just from habit. Um. So yeah, maybe adding just is easier. But you're adding infinitely long numbers, so sometimes there's, there are issues there. So I think y is two thirds, and if y is two thirds, x is zero. So I think it's negative two thirds. Well, that can't be right. X can't be zero. I've gone wrong here somewhere. Let's try again. Oh, uh, six fifteenth is two fifths. Okay, let's undo that. Thank you very much. I've got. I've did all the hard bits. So it's two fifths. So why is two fifths? So we're going to go back here, and we're going to substitute two fifths in. So we've got x plus two fifths is two thirds. So x is. Um, 10 fifteenths minus 6 fifteenths. I've just uh, changed the denominator. So x is 4 fifteenths. And at the very end, the question's asking is what is x minus y? So we've got, at the very end, I'm running out of space here, we've got x is 4 fifteenths, y is 6 fifteenths, I should have just left it in fifteenths, is negative 2 fifteenths. Oh good, that's an option. Uh, which of these expressions has the largest value? Uh, uh, I'm going to use a bit of logic here. I already know, just from knowing decimals, that that is bigger than that one. And in fact, these are all smaller than a fifth. 
So this is a third is 0 0.3 recurring, 0 0.25. So this is 0 0.58 roughly. This is this is about 0 0.58. This is 0 0.5. And if these are all fifths, this would be one. Oh, hang on. Am I just going to have to work these out? My, I know this is bigger than this. This might be bigger. I'm not sure. I think it's B or C. Oh dear, what's the trick? I know, I know it's not that one. Because I know this is higher, and I think this is this is this is close to being higher as well. This is 0 0.25, 0 0.2, and 0 0.16 ish. I'm going to come back to this one, see if I can see it later. AJ's offering me a hint, maybe I'll take the hint. I could, I could, I could just work this out, and that would just be over. I'm going to see in 60 minutes, would I have time to work it out? I've got 20 minutes left. Uh, okay, the total shaded out, so the three equilateral triangles are side length one, so they're all length one, I'll change to blue pen. As shown in a larger equilateral triangle, the total shaded area is half the area of the larger triangle. What is the side length of the larger equilateral triangle? Okay. So the area of one of these is, is, is the side, the, uh, the um, half AB sine C gets us the area of any triangle, as long as we know two sides and the angle in between them. The two sides are 1, so it's going to be half of sine C, and C, because it's equal to will be 60, which is going to be a half of sine 60 is root 3 over 2, so it's going to be root 3 over 4. So that's the area of one of them. The area of three of them is three lots of root 3 over 4. It's 3 root 3 over 4. So that's the area of the three shaded bits. The total shaded area is half the area of the larger triangle. So this number is half of the whole triangle. We know the whole triangle must be, uh, so the whole triangle must be 3 root 3 over 2, i.e. twice as big as this. And we know that's the same as a half sine c times the length. We'll call the length x. Uh, times the length, times the length. So the, le the, the length of the equilateral triangle initially is that. So 3 root 3 over 2 is a half root 3 over 2, because again it's still 60 times x squared. So multiplied by 4, you get 6 root 3. And divide by root 3 over root 3 is x squared. So 6 equals x squared root 6 equals x. So we think it's that one. You're guessing not, not on top form today, Steve. <laughs> so this is good, because obviously you can see you're getting a lot of roots in here. I don't know where you get root 5 from, um, but you can see you're getting root 3s in there, so it's, it's giving you a clue in the answer sometimes what to sort of use. The diagram shows a right angle triangle PQR. The point S is the midpoint of the side QR and tan QPR is 3 over 2. So QPR is this. Tan of this angle is 3 over 2. That just means that this side is 3 and this side is 2 or a multiple of 3 and 2. What is the value of sine QPS? So QPS is actually that angle there. And I'm actually just going to do something to make the numbers easy. I'm going to, instead of saying 3 and 2, I think if I do 6 and 4, it still gets 3 over 2 when you divide them. But doing this means that this length is 3, and then this triangle here is a right angle triangle. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 
if this is Pythagoras. Okay, so we're looking for the value of sine of the angle of the red angle QPS. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse or three over five. So it's just that one. So with the length of RP be six. Now the length of RP would be uh, in the triangle I've got here would be ten. No, it wouldn't be. It would be uh, the square root of sixty. The six squared plus four squared. No, it's square root of fifty-two. Sorry, my math is bad. Um, on the track one. Four of the following six-digit numbers are always divisible by seven, regardless of the values of the digits P and Q. So whatever P and Q are, four of these will be divided by divisible by seven. All right. Because I've seen questions like this before, my guess is it's E. And let's see if I can work out why. Okay, so there is uh, so basically, if you took P Q Q and multiplied it by one thousand and one, you get P Q Q P Q Q. Okay, so you know this whatever P and Q are is a multiple of a thousand and one, but by the same logic, if you multiply P P P by a thousand and one, you get P P P P P P. And for a similar thing, if you multiply PQ by that, yeah, so if you multiply PQ by 10,101, you get this, and the same with that. So these are effectively identical. These must both be divisible, because of, but, but if we had to prove they were divisible, this is how we're going to do it. Because these are identical, if you pick Q is 1 and P is 2, on this one, you pick P is 2 and Q is 1, which are way around you need it to be. So if we can prove, in fact, actually, if you multiply P, P as well by uh, 10,101, you get this as well. So we're going to check this and this. And if their multiples are 7, then their results, and their results are as well. So we're going to do uh, 1,001 divided by 7. 7s into 1 doesn't go, 7s into 10 goes once, carry 3, 7s into 30 goes uh, 4, carry 2, 7s into 21 goes 3. So we know that that one and that one are fine. And by a similar method, we can divide that by 7. 7s into 1 doesn't go, 7s into 10 goes once, carry 3 goes 4 times carry 4, goes 5 times carry 4, carry 5, 7's into 51, I've done something wrong here, have I? Oh, carry 3, there we go. Uh, bad maths there. 7's into 30 is 4, carry 2, 7's into 21 is 3. So we know that 7 times 1,443 is this, and because this is divisible by 10,101, and this is, then all four of them must be multiples of 7, and that one isn't. If you got this in the paper, you've got a 6 in 7 chance of getting this right if you have time. If B and C have to both be wrong, then we know D must be wrong too. No, um, it's not quite true, is it? B and C are effectively identical, but D isn't. Thing is, the, these are a multiple of 10,101. So I'm asking AJ. So basically, if these are not, then neither is this. That's not quite true. Because so although this is a multiple of 10,101, this is also a multiple of, of that, uh, that, and... Um, and that. So although it might not be, 7 might not go into this, if 7 goes into one of these, then this will still be, even if these aren't. I believe that's how it would work. 
So if you had this in the paper, you could just make up uh, five numbers given P's and Q's and divide them all by seven. And six out of seven times, you'll probably pick a number that isn't. But when you pick one that is, you won't actually get an answer. But you could actually just hard, hard work that out. The diagram shows a triangle with sides. n squared plus n, 2n plus 12, and 3n plus 3. What is the sum of all the values of n which the triangle is isosceles? So we need, oh, we have to do... Yes. But if b and c are, so... If these are, then this definitely is because it also has it also has that. So this has three different factors we can check, and if any one of them is, then this is. However, if this factor is, then all three of these are. I believe. Um, so n squared plus n, if that equals three n plus two plus three, then it's isosceles. Also. If n squared plus n equals 2n plus 12, then it's isosceles. Also, if the easy one at the end, 3n plus 3, because there's no square to it, is 2n plus 12, then it's isosceles. So we're just going to work out as many different n's as we can. We're going to start with the easy one at the end. If 3n plus 3 is 2n plus 12, then n is just 9. Uh, 30 plus 30. Yeah, so n is 9. So n is 9 is one of them. And we're going to solve these two as well. So we've got n squared minus n minus 12 is 0, n minus 4, n plus 3. Um, because it's a, we're looking for positive answers, so n is 4. In theory, to solve this, n would be negative 3, but if you put n is negative 3, you'll get some negative lengths, and we're not allowed negative lengths in our triangle. And then n squared, take 2n, take 3 is 0. So you've got n minus 3. No, n minus... Oh, hang on. What have I done wrong here? Oh, n minus 3, n plus 1. There we go. Yeah, and we do... Yeah, so, but if you're just checking anyway, if the question was how many of these or circle all these that are not divisible by 7. We might need a different way of doing it. So n is 3, n is 4, n is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13, 6. Oh, hang on. There's one other thing I'm going to check, actually. Do they all make a triangle? Um, so n is 3. So n is 3 gets us 9. That gets us 12, 12, and 6, 18. That's a triangle. When n is 4, that gets us tw uh, 20, uh, 20, and 15. That's a triangle. And when n is 9, we're going to get 90, uh, 30, and 30. That is not a triangle. There's no way to make a triangle with sides 30, 30, and 90. Because if you imagine you put your two 30s as straight as they can go, if you go as wide, you know, wide an angle as you can get with two 30s, there's no way to get a 90 that will join that up. It's just too long. There's no way to get a 90. So think, even if you go them as straight as possible, so it's almost 60 long. Uh, your 90 is too big, so that's not going to work. Um, so it's a good thing we did a little check. So I don't think n is 9 works. So I think it's 3 plus 4 is 7. Right, we have 6 minutes left. So we're probably not going to do it in the 60 minutes, but I have been talking for a lot of it. Maybe 6 minutes left, maybe it's a bit more than 6. I'm not sure what time I started. When 5... 1,655 is divided by 2 digit positive integer n, the remainder is 11. When 5,879 is divided by the same positive integer n, the remainder is 14. What is the sum of the digits of n? Yeah, I've posted either that one or similar to it, which is how I need to check at the end. Maybe it is that exact question. Yeah, so I think if, you, if you're if a friend of mine on Facebook, I do post Facebook puzzles, and I think I've done 
this question or a very similar question in terms but you have to check at the end which ones make triangles. So you get several values of n, but they don't all work. Uh, all right. So we know that 5,655 plus 11 is some multiple times n. And for a similar reason, we know 5,879 plus 14 is a different multiple of n. We need to work out what n is. Oh, it's two digits. That, that helps because there's probably more than one solution to this. But there's two digits, means we're going to try and find all the two digit solutions. So if we. If we add them. No, probably easy to take away. So we're going to take the top one away from the bottom one. So this is this is five thousand sixty six, five thousand six hundred sixty six, five six six six, and this is five eight nine three, and we're going to subtract them. So we're going to get b minus a lots of n, and then we're going to get. 227. So n is a factor of 227, so n must go into 227. So if we work out what the factors of 227 are, I'm looking for a two digit one. So not three, not nine, not five, not seven, not eleven. Oh God! Uh, it's, it's, it's handy knowing divisibility tricks, but uh, once I get past eleven, I don't know anymore. So does it go? Does thirteen go into it? Two, sorry, two, two, seven, thirteen. 13 into 22 goes once, carry uh, 9, 13 doesn't go into 97, so not 13, not 15, we've got 17, 17 into 227, so 17 into 227 goes once, carry 5, not 57. Thanks, Steve. See you later. All right, let's check nine. This could be a long time going. Is there a quicker way of doing this? Have I done something wrong? Oh, oh, I've done something wrong. I've done something wrong. I'm just being really silly. I'm going to... Erase this. Oh, stupid. I've added it to the wrong side. So basically, oh dear, I added it to the wrong side. So basically, if this gives you a remainder, you have to add the 11 onto this. And then when you take them away, you get 224, take 3, so 221. That's better, oh. and that's hopefully going to divide by a nicer number. So here we go, 221, not 3, not 5, not 7, not 9, not 11. <sighs> 
13. 13 into 221 goes uh, 1 to carry 9, 7. Oh, so it is 13 17s, exactly. So 221 is 13 17s. So 221 is 13 times 17. And we know that N has to be 13 or 17. Oh, that's it. Well, weirdly, because N could be both, couldn't it? It could be 13 or 17. But looking at the answers, what is the sum of the digits of N? It has to be this one, because 1 plus 7 is 8. So why can't it be 13? Yeah, I added, uh, I added the remainders to the wrong side, Ella, but that's, that's what to do. Well spotted. Why can't it be 13? Oh, because you can't. Yeah, you can't get a you can't get a remainder of fourteen if you divide by thirteen. So it has to. You know the two digit number is larger than fourteen. Yeah, well spotted, AJ. Just uh, I think we got that at the same time, but you've got a slight delay, so it looks like you've got it first. <laughs> but I didn't see your comment pop up until then. Right, we've got one question left. We're on. Uh, nice to see you, Ella. Anyway, we've effectively taken sixty minutes. So if I wasn't sat here explaining it, I'd like to think you'd give me a bit more time to work things out. So. The diagram throws three touching semicircles of radius one inside an E quarter triangle, which each with each semicircle also touches. The diameter of each semicircle lies along a side of the triangle. What is the length of each side of the of a whole triangle? So we're trying to work out the length of one edge here. So could we if we did that? we'd have an equal actual triangle in the middle and this is a right angle that's 60 I should probably make this bigger actually give me a second I'm gonna I'm gonna clear this and make it bigger <laughs> So let's do this bigger. I don't know if this is the right way to go about doing it. Move it out with my head. Um, but if we did something like this, we're left with 60. And that's going to be a right angle because tangents. So that must be 30. We don't know the length of this side, do we? Oh, yeah, we do. It's 2. And that's two. We don't know this length here. We don't know this length here. Hmm. We do know this length here. If we draw another line, again, because of because it just touches the semicircle, this is a tangent. So we do know. This is 2 and this is 1, so we can work this one out. And that's 30, that's 60, that's 90. Oh, and this triangle and this triangle are similar because they're both a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And this one as well. That's 60. That's 30. So this is also similar. So we've got three similar triangles here. If we work out this length here, we can work out this length here and this length here just through multiplication, I think. So let's... When I did it, I just did the same as you. Couldn't work out why it wasn't 13. Yeah, I bet I bet you didn't do the, the 14 and 11 bit, though. All right. So I'm just going to slide this along a bit. We're just going to work out what that red dot is. So we're going to call we're going to call this length here x, and we're going to work it out. And it's just Pythagoras. So we're going to say that 2 squared 
is x squared plus 1 squared. Uh, so 3 is x squared, or root 3 is x. So that works out x. So just see if I can get this right. So this is the scale factor of this one to the larger triangle, this one here, is root 3 to 2. So the scale factor is 2 over root 3 times 1. So this bit here, we'll call it y, we know y is 1, which is this one here, multiplied by the scale factor, which is 2 over root 3. Or uh, 2 root 3 over 3. So y is 2 root 3 over 3. And then z, which is this one here, is also a similar triangle. And to work out z, it's because z is going to be 1 divided by, or multiplied by the scale factor. But the scale factor in this case is going to be 1 over root 3. So it's going to be 1 times 1 over root 3. Or 1 over root 3. Uh, so z is going to be root 3 over 3. So the whole length is going to be x plus y plus z. So the whole length is going to be, please let this be an answer, root 3 plus 2 root 3 over 3 plus root 3 over 3. And look at my answers, and there's 2 with root 3s in it. So this is going to be 3 root 3 over 3. So in total, you've got 3, 4, 5, 6 root 3 over 3, or 2 root 3, which is that one there. All right, I think we're done. Oh, no, I have to go back to do a question. Yeah, so I definitely run out of time. If I was doing this and explaining it, I've run out of time. So um, if I wasn't sitting here chatting to you guys or uh, explaining what I'm doing, and then I'd probably go back and I'd probably, I don't think I'd have a guess, but I think I've got a 50% chance. I think it's one of these two. So this is approximately 0.58. It might be 0.583 recurring, I think. It's something like that. This is 0 0.25, 0 0.45, 0. 0.61, roughly 0.61, maybe the ones occurring, or 0.616 occurring, maybe something like that. So, so far, I'm going to see D is 0 0.2, 0 0.16, roughly 0 0.134, 0.143, and 0 0.125, 12, 26, 36, 42, 52. 62, it might be this one actually. Oh, is it just going to be this? Maybe it is this last one. Maybe I'm wrong here. 12, 26, 36, 42, 62. So this, yeah, it's probably going to be E then. Yeah. 0 0.16, 0 0.14, roughly. 0 0.125, 0 0.1 recurring, 0.1. So 1. 21, uh, 33 and a half, 37 and a half, 47 and a half, 67, 57 and a half, 63. So it's actually E. Maybe it's an infinite series then that, uh, that tends to infinity the more fractions you add. So yeah, I, I don't like my method for that one, but let's, uh, let's mark what we've got. So we're going to go back to the start. We're going to see how many out of 125 I've got. I have had AJ pointing out a couple of mistakes, so um, maybe he's... Uh, allowed me to get full marks, so thanks AJ, who's been watching along. So we're going to mark what we've got. So here we go, get our green pen out, and we're going to mark what we've got. So question 1 is B, it's 201.9. Question 2 is E, is that? Question 3 is D. Question 4 is B, 10. Question 5 is D. I've got a calculation on the way. 
Oh, that's 0.3. Oh, stupid. 0.3. Yeah, so I've just got this one wrong. It's D. So I actually get a question wrong. Oops. Uh, is B. Right. So yeah. Uh, is 7 is B, 2, 8 is E, 2730, 9 is C, it's 31, 10 is B, 40,000, 11 is C, 27, 12 is also C, it's 8. I'd have got that, if 9 was an option, I'd have probably got that one wrong because I did something wrong there, didn't I? Uh, 13 is A, 14 is C. 15 is A. It's quite a few root, like root, square root stuff today, wasn't there? Uh, 16 is also A. 17 is D. Eighteen is B. Nineteen is E. <laughs> oh that, yeah that is nice it's just an infinite series though when you realise that every term in this sequence gets bigger um, and it's E I think actually weirdly once I got to once I got to this one I knew I knew I was wrong with my guess 20 is D so I got 20 wrong I oh, know 20 apologies for misreading 20 is B 21 is D, 22 is E, I like that question, 23 is A, um, as I think a lot of people who do this will get 16, I think. 24 is C8 and 25 is D, it's 2 root 3, and there we go, that is our... Uh, that is our math challenge. You think one is wrong, it was arithmetic, so you let me miss it. That's fine, yeah. If I've just made an arithmetic mistake, that's fine. I think my method was, other than I've made a mistake in the arithmetic, I think my method was fine. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching. If you have watched this live, I appreciate that. I appreciate if you're not followed already, I appreciate a follow. Um, this will go on YouTube, so if you are watching YouTube at a late date, Thanks very much as well. What did you get? Post your scores in the comments below. See, so did you did you outscore me? In fact, let's work out what my score was. So I think I got 120. I think I got I got 70 here because I got one wrong, and then I got 10 lots of six. So I got 60 here. So 130. It's out of 135. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Yeah, um, so can you beat 130? Yeah, 135. You pretty much have to get them all right to do that. Um, don't forget, if you get one of the last 10 questions wrong, you're going to lose some marks. And if you like what I do, check out some of the other maths videos. I'm going to do some senior ones coming up. I unlikely to be able to solve all of those. Uh, although one day I will. I think I will try and get 100% on a senior one at some point in time. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, tune in soon. Cheers.